Hey everybody, so normally on this channel, um, I react to stuff I've never heard before. And thanks to this channel, I've started listening to more and more music on my own that I, there's just so much music to listen to. And I don't always have time to like record my reactions to stuff because like, if I'm reacting to a three minute long song, my video will end up being 10 minutes long. Or if I just listen to the three minute song, that's three minutes, you know? Um, so my point being, I listen to a lot of music that I don't really get to showcase on here. And lately I decided to flip the script a little and try to uh, show you guys some of the things that I've been listening to, which a lot of times I like to listen to full albums of stuff. So um, this next record, I just did Elliot Smith, showed a couple tracks from his album Either Or. Uh, the next group that I've been listening to, I. I won't say I've been listening to the group. I've listened to this one album like five times. Uh, it's by a band called Interpol, or Interpol, Interpol, called Turn On The Bright Lights. And I didn't really know what's, the, the whole album's good in an interesting way. It's not the type of music I generally listen to. I don't even know what genre it is. Is it like new wave, like alternative or, or punk? I don't know, wait, let me, let me look them up really quick. I-N-T-E-R-P-O-L, just a band <laughs> yeah rock band they are post-punk revival okay um, also known as the garage rock revival new wave new rock revolution is a genre of indie rock that developed in the late 90s and early 2000s original uh, inspired by original sounds and aesthetics of garage rock in the late 60s and new wave post-punk of the late 70s um, so yeah, I had no idea which track to choose off this album because they're like all good. Um, the whole album just goes very well together. So if you like this type of music or this track, I would recommend just listening to the whole record. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm going to go with Obstacle 1, which is a good, in my opinion, introduction to the group. And I'm pretty sure it was a single as well. So yeah, thank you very much for joining me and for... Um, giving me a platform to do something like this, which is a little more unorthodox than what I generally um, do. So yeah, uh, they're also, this album was uh, very well received and critically acclaimed, so I'm sure some of you have heard it already anyway. But uh, let's get into it. Obstacle One by Interpol off the album Turn On The Bright Lights. Uh, it's a very unique album and it's very much like a, a vibe to listen to the whole thing. And I'll, yeah, I, I love listening to this album. Oh, that takes you off guard. Thanks for joining me.
drumming's awesome. It. I forgot to do that. Continuing. <laughs> song all right i'm gonna stop it there um i love the titles the first four songs untitled obstacle one nyc and pda we have obstacle two stella was a diver and she was always down leif erickson leif erickson anyway um yeah i really like this album um it's different than the type of stuff i generally listen to it's i was trying to one thing i've been trying to do lately is listen to as many different genres of music as possible and see like how many different ones that i enjoy and try to open my mind up to as many you know styles of music and also learn more about the history of more recent music as well um and the different you know scenes and the different it's it's all very interesting super cool and all very inspirational i guess um and yeah also it's really good uh so this is the only album i've heard by this group i have no idea if they're if the rest of their stuff is really good too let me know if there's any other tracks that i should check out from uh later material because i think this was their debut album i think um and yeah let me know if you like this group if there's any groups like them that i should check out um and Thank you so much for joining me. Let's take a look at the lyrics, which with uh, this group and when I listen to the albums uh, for this, when I listen to this album specifically, um, I'm not really paying a ton of attention to the lyrics. It's more just the feel of it. Uh, I hear him. I hear him say, Can you go stabbing yourself in the neck? When that happens, it sounds like the guitar is stabbing and it's really cool. Um, but yeah, let's see. I wish I could eat the salt off your lost, faded lips. We can cap the old times and make playing only logical harm. We can cap the old lines and make playing that nothing else will change. <laughs> okay? But she can read, she can read, she can read, she can read. She's bad. It's different now that I'm poor and aging. You'll, I'll never see this face again. You go stabbing yourself in the neck. Okay, so the... the Lyrics are interesting, but the imagery that they, that hearing the individual phrases conjure up are great. Interpol's Paul Banks is talking to an unnamed woman. He wants her to cheer up, start things over again, and do things right. He knows that there's something wrong between them. The woman can actually read Banks' mind. Banks was thinking about the relationship, and he knows that something is going wrong. And that's why she can read. Yeah, okay. Um, the inspiration for the song is made clear in the chorus, where a 2001 uh suicide of a young plus size model is turned into a metaphor what wait is the inspiration for the song is made clear in the chorus where the 2001 suicide of a young plus size model is turned into a metaphor of loss between banks and the once alive woman the chorus affirms banks wishes of having her back as mentioned in the first verse what the hell wow He's talking the girl down from the edge of suicide. She's arguing that her beauty has faded and her life and quality of life will never be the same, so what's the point of living? He's telling her she's stabbing herself in the neck more by being certain that things will never be better again. He's trying to save her life and make her see nothing is wrong with her but her nihilistic perspective. 
What an interesting line. We can find new ways of living. Yeah, the album's very, like, intense, too, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> Most of the songs are intense. The residual pain that Banks feels from playing with this woman transcends logic. It's a deep emotional hurt that in all likelihood he does not deserve. Banks suggests a change where the hurt he and his lover feel can be not eliminated but dialed down to reasonable hurt. We can find new ways of living and make only logical harm. We can top the old times, claim making that nothing will change. It's different now. Yeah, all right. It's in the way that she's posed. It's the things that she puts in my head. Her stories are boring and stuff. She's always calling my bluff. She puts the weights into my little heart. She gets in my room and she takes it apart. She puts weights into my... This is a really... Wow, the lyrics are really good too. Holy cow. All right. She's not perfect, but she's quite the opposite for the narrator. There are things that bother him far too much, but he's still there for her. These lines suggest that the woman makes Banks feel emotionally burdened, depressed, possibly, and the line she t gets in my room and takes it apart may mean that the woman is also highly critical of Banks in his life. She packs it away, packs it away, packs it away. It's in the way that she walks. Her heaven is never enough. She puts weights in my heart. No matter what Banks does to accommodate his lover, she is never satisfied. The pressure this builds up in Banks as the weight of his heart grows heavier and heavier. Not even going to comment too much on that. All right, Obstacle 1 is the second single and second track off Interpol's acclaimed debut, Turn On The Bright Lights. In an interview, the band said the song was written when they saw the report of a model who had recently committed suicide by stabbing herself in the neck. The band's lead singer, Paul Banks, has also said the song is open to interpretation. One possible interpretation is that the singer is mourning the death of a woman he was with in his youth. I wish I could eat the salt off your lost faded lips. Is the singer saying he wishes he could have her back? The way he describes her lips is similar to a corpse. The repeated lyrics she can read, she's bad, means she was rebellious leading to an accident which killed her. And now he's older and sad he can never see her again because she stabbed herself in the neck, which could just be another way of saying she got herself killed. He goes on to remember her, which continues to hurt. And this is, of course, just one of many potential meanings. Um, lead singer and guitarist Paul Banks revealed to Pitchfork, Pitchfork in 2003 why the song is named Obstacle One. I've just never really been all that interested in titles, so either I'm very inspired or it's just whatever, the working title. Obstacle 1 and 2 actually came from Daniel. He was working on those. Daniel. I came up with those names, and they were just our working titles, and everyone was like, those are great names. We wrote Obstacle 2 first and Obstacle 1 second, second, and I do think it was relating to the fact that for some reason we'd had a drought in our writing. We kind of had a down phase. We hadn't written anything good in a couple of months, and all of a sudden we were pumping out songs. It was sort of like that. Um... Let me make sure there's this. Yeah, their debut album, Turn on the Bright Lights, was critically acclaimed, making it to number 10 on NME's list of top 10 albums of the year and number one on Pitchfork Media's list of top 50 albums of the year. Their subsequent rep records, Antics and Our Love to Admire, brought even greater critical and co commercial success. All right. Huh. Um, that's awesome maybe i should check out some tracks off those albums let me know what uh, songs i should do and thank you very much for joining me i appreciate you guys and i'll see you later thank you for letting me do stuff like this which is a little different than what i normally do that's Rope nine out great track